Hey guys, it's Dr. Justin Marcajani here. Today's video is going to be on the adrenals and why they are so important to help heal your gut. I get this question all the time with people that have gut issues and they're like, well, I just really want to focus on my gut. My, my adrenals really aren't the problem. My energy may be okay. Maybe my mood's off a little bit, but I really got these gut issues. We're going to connect the dots and why the adrenals are so important to helping to heal the gut. And before we dive in, click down below. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Really appreciate it. Hit that bell so you get notifications of great content. And if you could, we'd love to get a review from y'all. So feel free, head over to justinhealth.com slash iTunes. We'll put a link below. Just write us a review. We really appreciate it. We're going to do some question shows for people that have um, did a screenshot of their review, email it to us, and, and we'll do a question and answer show for people that have just done the review. We appreciate it. All right, so why are the adrenals so important? So the adrenals are really important for managing inflammation. So a lot of people that have adrenal dysfunction that have cortisol rhythm issues, right? Their cortisol that's produced by their adrenals throughout the day, the rhythm's off normally. It should be this nice high to low type of rhythm. People that have adrenal dysfunction, that rhythm tends to get flatter, or it actually may get more reversed, or it actually just stays chronically high, all are which a concern. If cortisol stays too high and we're chronically stressed, we're actually going to be tearing down and ripping up our gut lining, and that just increases permeability, increases immune stress and food allergy response and also suppresses our immune system, which opens us up for other types of infections. When our a cortisol is chronically low and flat or just low across the board, we're going to have a harder time regulating inflammation, generating energy. We need a healthy cortisol response to deal with inflammation, to deal with stress, to help heal and recover the gut lining, to have a healthy immune system. So I tell patients, like when we're trying to support the adrenals, we're not just trying to do it to make yourself feel better. We're trying to support the immune system, support anabolic physiology. And anabolic physiology is your body's ability to heal. Stack breaks up and heal and heal and heal. Your body's in this constant um, breakdown, build up state all the time. And when we're chronically inflamed and we don't have the reserves to deal with that inflammation, we start to break down faster than we build up. So then we have this catabolic imbalance. We're breaking down faster than we're able to heal and recover. And that's super, super important. So when, especially with women, because when women start to have their adrenal glands stressed, that starts to throw off their female cycle. Because when you get stressed, you start taking progesterone and shoving it downstream to cortisol to deal with stress and inflammation. When that starts to happen, then you start throwing off the estrogen progesterone balance and estrogen starts to get skewed and that creates a state of estrogen dominance. Now you start seeing heavier periods, more moody, more irritability, breast tenderness, back pain. Just those PMS symptoms tend to, tend to stretch out. And then of course, when you start having excessive menstruation, then you start going anemic and then you have more energy, more mitochondrial stress, more thyroid stress too, because you can't carry oxygen appropriately. So stress plays a big role. Females, it's more magnified because their cycle gets disrupted, and that, that's a, a big issue uh, on that front. And so cortisol plays a big role with stress, inflammation, immune system, building up the integrity of the gut lining. We also want to make sure the immune system is better because if we have, like, let's say, a bug like H. pylori or a bacterial overgrowth or a fungal overgrowth, we, we want to go after the infection, but we want to make sure that the person afterwards has a strong enough constitution where they're not going to get reinfected. So the goal is we knock out an infection and then their immune system in their gut and their digestion, everything is better and stronger. So if they get exposed to an infection, their immune system will be able to handle it better. So we want to decrease the chance of reinfection on the backside. That's really important. So certain things help with adrenals on the nutrient side, B5, vitamin C, right? Really important nutrients like that. Um, getting the cortisol under control. So we use like cortisol hormone building blocks like pregnenolone and DHEA, maybe glandular tissue if needed, uh, maybe things to calm down the HPA access. So it just depends on the different pattern. So we'll do like a cortisol rhythm test. We'll do a urinary cortisol rhythm test that we'll look at free and total cortisol. And then we'll also get a window into DHEA sulfate, which is a sex hormone precursor made by the adrenals. And the more depleted the adrenals are, the more DHEA can, can drop down. And we'll also look at sex hormones in women, especially as their cycle and their mood starts to go off. We'll want to look at those sex hormones too. So the adrenals play a very, very vital role with helping to support the gut. So even if you don't have any typical energy or mood issues off the bat and you're just kind of focusing on the gut, you still want to make sure those adrenals are supported so you have optimal healing on the backside. 
I hope that makes sense, guys, because I know it's it's easy to just kind of go from allopathic medicine where you're treating symptoms to go to functional medicine and still want to treat symptoms. But remember, the upstream goal is always to support the underlying system and stress imbalances so then we're promoting healing. We're not just trying to spot treat symptoms downstream, but also fix the underlying stress and symptoms or systems, hormone system, gut system, detox system upstream. Hope that makes sense. If you guys enjoyed today's content, click below. You can schedule with myself available worldwide for functional medicine consult support. Also have colleagues as well there to help you as well. And if you enjoyed it, thumbs up, comments below. Really appreciate it, y'all. Let me dive in a couple questions here. I heard a psychiatrist say that the paleo diet's recommended for ADHD patients, but not OCD patients. What would someone with a both disorders benefit from or be harmed by a paleo diet? Yeah, that's a total nonsense. Um, so everyone develops certain symptoms based off of imbalances in their health. So the person that has ADHD, someone else may have the same diet and the same underlying nutritional issues, and they may develop OCD, right? Obsessive compulsive disorder. Everyone's a little bit different. There's a genetic predisposition, epigenetics, that's going to make everyone susceptible to different symptomology, right? And then we typically group diseases, um, you know, with symptoms. So the same underlying issues could be present with one person and they could have a total different symptom presentation. So don't get caught up in that. The foundation for everyone, no matter where, where they're at in their health, is going to be an anti-inflammatory, nutrient-dense, low-toxin diet. Everyone will benefit from that. Now, some have to get a little bit more nuanced in regards to anti-nutrients and FODMAPs or salicylates or oxalates. Some have to adjust macros. Some, their digestion is so screwed up, they really have to do other things to get back into balance. But that's going to be a foundation for everyone. And of course, we adjust. Great questions. Organic acid profile, picolinate's very low. It says to limit omega-3s, add protein. Should I remove omega-3s from my diet? Uh, though it's anti inflammatory Now, that's not the issue. The issue is amino acids. Uh, and then we also have to look at why are the amino acids low? They're either low because of your, you're very stressed and you're, cord you're very catabolic and you're breaking down a lot of amino acids. You're not breaking down or digesting or assimilating much of the protein. So it's a combination of stress on one side and absorption and digestion on the other side. So that just kind of keep that there. But no, the omega-3 thing is not the issue. I get it says that, but you got to have experience. These labs, the lab information they give you at the end is just kind of the um, the idiot version. It's not really the clinical applicable version. If my urine has no color, what should I be looking at? Probably just overhydrated. Male in his 40s suffered for chronic stress, has a parasite and immune issue for years. Tests now seem clear for bugs, but still low immune, low cortisol, morning and afternoon, where to start? Again, all the same stuff we talk about. Again, just because someone did a stool test does not mean that they are infection free. I'd want to do a better quality stool test like the ones I recommend. And you'd always start with diet and blood sugar and adrenals and hormones. Always start there. It's the same for every single person, no matter what. Any suggestions on extreme fatigue after bowel movements with increased heart rate? Also have to urinate 50 times a day. Urination's more after a bowel movement. Yeah, same stuff. Got to look at the diet. Got to look at digestion. Got to look at infections. All of those are probably a big issue. There's probably a lot of detoxification problems based on the fact that you're urinating so much. Could be some prostate things, but probably some inflammation issues. So you really want to look at what's going on with the gut and definitely want to look at the adrenals too. All right, great questions, y'all. Let me see what's going on here. Um, how do you naturally get cortisone up? So a couple things here. You can work on the under, getting the underlying stressors under control. So if you have a lot of stress from food or blood sugar, too much sugar, food allergens, those are all easy things that you can do to help on the food side. Um, making sure you can digest the food. You could be eating really healthy food, but if you can't break it down, that could be a stressor. So getting the food stress under control. And then after that is just getting blood sugar under control and getting sleep under control and making sure you're not over-exercising. So as long as you can get diet and blood sugar and inflammation and sleep and not over-exercising, that's a good first start. Now, there may be other things that need to be done in between there, but that's a good first natural step there. What B vitamins are good for adrenal fatigue? B5, B6 are great. I mean, typically a good B complex is going to be good that will have a lot of those in there. Uh, vitamin C, those are kind of good no-brainers that are going to be helpful. And then a good central fatty acids are always good too. And then really working on the diet, right? A good anti-inflammatory, low toxin template. In terms of detox, what are the infrared saunas are safe? And when you have amalgam, I use a, a combination of a near and far infrared sauna by Sunlighten. 
that's good. You just got to make sure after you do a 15, 20 minute sweat, you're, you're using good quality minerals and or mineral water during and after. And then make sure you use a good quality soap or a good sulfur soap after you detoxify so you can rinse any toxins that are on your skin afterwards. Good questions. How is the thyroid connected to healing the gut and fat digestion? Well, if you have low thyroid, right, one of the major symptoms of low thyroid is constipation. So that could definitely in inhibit good bowel motility, number one. And then a lot of times, you know, thyroid is going to be connected, not necessarily healing the gut, but if you can't absorb the nutrients you need for optimal thyroid function because your gut's messed up, that could easily impair your thyroid. And a lot of times the same autoimmunity from like gluten or gut permeability, it's connected to the gut. So it's not that the thyroid, you need to heal the thyroid to heal the gut. It's going to be important to have that there because that's going to help with healthy metabolism and energy and bowel motility. But the same issues that affect the gut are typically the same issues that affect the thyroid. So you usually have to support them together to promote healing. Great questions. Can functional medicine help with muscular dystrophy disease? Yeah, I mean, it can. Muscular dystrophy usually is something at birth a lot of times, happens early on. So it's tough because once you've activated those epigenetics, it's tough to, to move that needle very early on when something's genetic like that. But usually you know, on the preventative side, you really want to look at toxin exposure as a mom, really good diet, really good nutrition, nutrient density, all that good stuff during pregnancy so we're not activating epigenetics um, there. Now, once you have muscular dystrophy, I mean, there is definitely some type of autoimmune connection there, potentially. So you really want to look at all things that help with gut permeability and all kind of autoimmune templates as a good like foundation for sure. Um, female 40, awesome. feel good at 5 a.m., but super tired at 8 a.m. We usually have um, BPC or T around 6 a.m., diet low carb, maybe a little bit of starch at night, anything to try to stabilize. Yeah, I mean, when you start getting more nuanced like this, it just comes to me needing to ask about 20 more questions and also needing lab testing. So I won't be able to give a specific answer, but probably something off with the cortisol rhythm and it would need to be supported accordingly, but I would need more tests to know. Can leaky gut cause adrenal issues? Yeah, it can because the more your immune system is overreacting because of gut permeability, the more your adrenals are going to be called on to manage that stress. So that stress is bi-directional. It can go from the gut to the adrenals. It can also go from the adrenals to the gut. Totally. Is it possible that the GI map test won't show a bug infection? Yeah, it is. You may have to run different tests. You may have to run an organic acid side by side or a breath test as well. It's possible. Is hemp a good alternative for omega-3 chai makes me bloated? Yeah, hemp's good. I like hemp. I think it's fine. Um, but omega-3 chai, I mean, I would do omega-3 high-quality fish oil or cod liver oil first. Um, Plant-based omega-3s tend to not get converted well. The delta-5 desaturase enzyme is, is, is not highly active, doesn't get converted from ALA. Alpha-linolenic alpha acid, which is an 18-carbon omega-3, to the 20 and 22 eicosapentaenoic and decosahexaenoic acid, which is in fish oil and cod liver oil. Having normal progesterone but high estrogen in cycling women, does that say anything different than low progesterone and normal estrogen? Um, I have no progesterone. I'm trying to just digest that. Having normal progesterone but high estrogen, um, say anything different than low progesterone and normal estrogen? It's the same thing. So it's the same thing. So you're talking about normal progesterone, high estrogen versus low progesterone and normal. It's just the re relationship. It's all the ratio. So both is estrogen dominance. Obviously, having normal progesterone is better, right? Um, that's better because it's, it's, it's more of a stress thing. When you have high estrogen, it tends to mean that there's going to be more detoxification issues and or exposure to hormones that are not being processed properly, or just we're overwhelming the system, too much hormones in the meat, maybe birth control pills, maybe toxins in plastic. Both are important. You, you look at it a little bit differently. If I've been, if I have been constipated for eating cheese, bread, and waffles, what can I do? What can I test if my adrenals are low? Yeah, I mean, you just got to stop eating the crappy food to start, and then you can do some testing regarding the adrenals after. Any tests recommended for chemical sensitivity? Um, yeah, I need to ask 10 more questions. Chemical sensitivity to like perfumes and scents, things like that. I mean, always got to look at the gut, always got to look at hormones, may want to look at mold. It just depends. 
If you're taking wheatgrass, zinc, carnosine, colostrum, NAC, and a probiotic all in the morning, is that bad to try to heal the gut? No, no problem. Eating very healthy but still enjoy sweets a lot. Any type of sugar substitute you recommend? I mean, stevia, as long as there's no maltodextrin. Um, you know, some monk fruit's okay. I mean, you want to make sure you're not always priming up your body to taste sugar all the time because there could be a little bit of insulin output when you're tasting sweet. We don't want your body primed to always have to make insulin all the time. So you got to be careful with that. Good question. Good question. Okay. Uh, how does one become a functional doctor? I mean, so most people, they're already in the health field already, right? Chiropractic, medical doctor, nutritionist, like they're already in that field. And then they just go for extra training. Now, if you're not in the health field, you know, you probably don't want to go start up and, and do four to eight years in school, you know, in your 30s or 40s, probably going to take too much time. So you probably want to look at something easier on the nutrition side, like a nutrition certification. And while you do extra things on the side to, to get nutrition uh, or functional medicine skills. So there are different courses out there that you can do on functional medicine. And you can also combine that with like a good nutritional program like the NTP or there's a couple other you know programs like FDN. I'll have my own program at some point soon for functional medicine docs. But you know, start with a good nutrition certification and then add on some kind of extra functional medicine program to that. And you really want programs that are more clinical than like didactic classroom based. Like it's good to have some good classroom knowledge, but in the end, that stuff's not gonna help you work with patients and get them better. Hey, thanks so much. Really appreciate you guys writing a review. Justinhealth.com slash iTunes for a review. Really appreciate that. If you do a five-star review, whatever you think is necessary, give me a screenshot of it and email it to office at Justin Health. We'll do a, a uh, in-depth video on all those different questions to help you guys out as a reward. So I appreciate that. All right, very good, very good. Any functional recommendations for cystitis? I mean, so the cystitis is bladder infections. So a lot of times that's E. coli, right? And so you gotta support and knock down E. coli. So you can do different herbs like uva ursi, D. manos. You can do raw cranberry extract or raw cranberry juice, no sugar added organic. And you can do that with apple cider vinegar. Those are all good, healthy things. And then usually get to the root cause by fixing whatever's going on in the gut, maybe birth control pills, maybe um, other issues going on with poor digestion. So you'd have to look at the root cause. So one is kind of getting to the root cause. The other is treating the symptoms. So I gave you some good symptom stuff there to help with that. Um, how is the best, what's the best test for candida? You can do like a, a good quality genetic stool test. My, one of my favorites is going to be doing a organic acid test and looking at the D-arabinose, which is going to be a great marker for candida. Excellent. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's chat. Uh, comments down below, review, I appreciate it. Justinhealth.com slash iTunes. We'll put a link down below for a review. You guys have an awesome day, and I will be back later on this week. You guys take care. Bye now.